other people. Okay? We don't talk about Shirley and what she did at church and how you always knew she was a sinner. And we don't do that. We don't say she don't look good in that way. And we don't do that. We build each other up. So God is saying, what life has taught you is that, is that when people aren't around, talk about them. Right? Because I'm telling you, this is more natural. It's more natural for you to speak bad about somebody than it is to speak good in your flesh. So you've got to curve your tongue and say, I will not speak evil about anyone. If I don't have anything good to say, my mom used to say, I'm not going to say anything at all. Praise God. It, it was, it's not the Bible, but I'll tell you what, that was some great wisdom. Okay? We don't slander. It says, filthy language from your lips. You guys, I was at a Bible study and a pastor cursed doing the Bible study. And we all said, this wasn't that long ago, maybe about two months ago. And he used the P word. And I went. And everybody else is just, good word, pastor. I was like, nobody here is offended? I don't think Christians use profanity. So I, you know, I waited until the Bible study was over and I said, hey, uh, Pastor, that word was very offensive to me. And I'm sure it was very offensive to the Holy Spirit. And I told him in a, in a, in a loving way, but I said, the scripture says that we don't have filthy communication proceeding out of our mouth. And so you're not, you offended me, but I think you offended the Holy Spirit even more because God's Spirit lives in you. Because we have to sharpen each other. We don't let this type of sin go and just go, well, you know, it's okay. No, it's not okay because the scripture says it's not okay. So we don't, Christians, it says put away, God is saying, look, filthy, filthy language from your lips. He said put it away from you. Okay, you're dead. Do not lie to each other. Okay, I'm going to do this and don't do it. You know, uh, sins, uh, uh, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Praise God. We're being transformed into the image of Christ. I see you, I see Christ. Right? I see you, I see Christ. I see you, you say you're a Christian, but you're cursing me out. I don't see Christ. I see you, you tell me you're a Christian, but you're lying to me or you're slandering other people the whole time I'm talking to you. I don't see Christ. Okay? So you are representing Christ and he's trying to transform you into the image of Christ. So that when people see you, they see Christ and they can see the love of God and come to Christ. He's using you to draw people to Christ. If whatever you push off, that's what people are going to see when you say you're a Christian. Okay? Now, it says uh, here, it says uh, uh, here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. No respect to a person. Therefore, as God's chosen people, Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion. Clothe yourself. Kindness. Right? Kindness. You can't... <laughs> I mean, as Christians, sometimes you see Christians doing some things like, that was me. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit tells them. We're kind. Christians are kind people. Oh, I see you only have a couple of things that got a whole basket. Go ahead and go in front of me. You don't be like, I know you've been trying to get in front of me. We're kind of people, right? right? Someone says they need help, you don't go, that ain't my problem. That would show somebody, wow, thank you, I just saw Jesus. You're a Christian, right? Is that what Jesus would do? That's not. So we're trying to show people Christ, okay? Kindness, humility, okay? You're not a boastful person. Or you, and you're not all, and you're not. I'm right about what I know about the Bible. You don't know the Bible. Is that humility? 
You don't know the word like I know the word. I'm a real Christian. I don't know what you are. <laughs> That's not humility. All right? And the way we talk, I mean, sometimes I hear Christians talk and I go, oh, God. Now you know. I, and and they're, they're putting you in the, whole, in the whole basket. Okay? It says uh, 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 humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. If you do not forgive, can Christ forgive you? Wow. That's the biggest scripture in the Bible to me. If you don't forgive, I cannot forgive you. That means all my sins are still on me because I can't stand Him. Yeah. All my sins are still on me. You can't forgive anything because I can't stand my sister. She's only one person. Everybody else I love just like Jesus loves me. I just can't stand her. Because she took $50 from me and didn't tell me right out my walk. And went and bought weed with it, you know. And now you just, I just can't stand her. As if Christ, you know, you didn't, like you, when you came to Christ, you were just... Like, I have no sin, but I'm going to come to you anyway, Christ. So, like, you have no sin, right? So Christ didn't have to forgive you of anything. Christ had to forgive us, all of us, for some jacked up stuff, right? But somebody steal $50 from you, you're like, oh, I'll never speak to her again. That's not Christ's behavior. We forgive anger. I know whatever reason you did it, you, you did it. God bless you. Let's move on. Let, let's continue to work together. Let me pray for you. Do you need another 50? You know, we go the extra mile. We're not, we're not holding grudges against people all our lives for things. And I'm telling you this, and, and people I'm telling you, some Christians will go, well, we don't do that. But in the body of Christ, it still exists. Praise God. Okay. Uh, you may, it says, uh, bear with each other, forgive whatever grievance you may have against, um, against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And, and over all these virtues, put on love, uh, which binds them all together in perfect unity. What is love? Put on love. If you want to know what love is, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It will give you all, the, it will give you the 13 characteristics of love. If you're missing any of them, you don't have love. Okay? It's slow to anger. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs done. If you have these things in you, you are, you are not operating in love. It is patient. It is kind. It is long-suffering. Okay? These things show that you have love. God says, Add these things to your personality. Then once you add love, now you've got it. Without love, the scripture says you have nothing. Imagine me being a great preacher. I know the word back and forth, Hebrew and Greek. Can write it, can get a whole crowd jumped up. Get home, I'm so impatient with my wife, I'm yelling at her like she ain't nobody. Right? Am I anybody in Christ? Christ is. So when you so you preach the good message. Look how you treat your wife. You that, that doesn't prove Christianity to me at all. That doesn't prove that shows me that you're missing the most important ingredient. You know what I mean? You're trying to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich with no peanut butter. It's like you're missing the most important ingredient, which is love. So uh, uh, if we don't have love, the scripture says you have nothing. So make sure you have that. And get it from Corinthians chapter 13 if you have to do it every day for a month, like I did. Or for a year, like I did. And it says, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. How do you have peace when you have turmoil? Trusting in God. If you trust in God, Turmoil will not bother you because you know God got it all in hand. God calls us to peace. You know why? Because God says, you are going to learn how to trust me in all situations. Everybody is going to learn how to trust God in all situations. Until you say, God, I can't do it without you, God will not move. 
you have to realize that God is the one that's in control of all things. Of all things. Understand? No matter what situation you come in, God is in control. And your faith in that will give you peace. Then you can lose your job, go home, and say, I thank you, God, for the next move in my life that you're leading me to. Instead of going, on, why you had me get fired? You ain't God. If you was God, I love you. 